Now, I'm not a politician, but when something is going wrong, I believe I'm brave enough to distance myself away from it and work against it. But the main issue is we're not finding response from the Muslim community at all. There are a minority that agree with what I do and would sit with a Jewish and a non-Muslim and a Christian and have a wonderful meal. But there are those and they're the majority that do not agree with modernizing the religion to make it compatible with the society we are living in. This here is where the clash happens. It's one problem when you have a doctor abusing the body of a female girl that's just been born. It's a larger problem when you have a religious leader that allows it to happen within the community. We need to unite Muslims and non-Muslims ideologically and agree on one fact that the people of falsehood will only think they are truthful if the truthful remain silent. If you have a blog, if you write a column in the newspaper, do whatever you can. Now I know there are some politicians in recent times that have stood up and they're, they're very against Islam. And they want to tell people that Islam is a very dangerous religion. Why do they say that now? I don't oppose these politicians because I know exactly what filth is in my religion. I know exactly what's going on, which is why I don't speak out against them. I'm against generalizing because there are good Muslims. But the main message behind it, I agree with. Islam is the fastest growing religion on earth. I'm not speaking 100 a day. I'm speaking 20,000 a day. In one city, Alexandria, the whole of Egypt, like that, 20,000 embrace Islam in one day. I know that it's a Muslim environment, but their grandparents never embraced Islam that fast, 20,000 20, families in one day. It's growing. We don't have a problem with it growing in the right direction. But if it's growing in the wrong direction, that's where myself and other good people who love their countries believe that it's time to stand. And that's what I'm doing. I went in 2016 to Korea. I joined in the largest peace summit on earth. And I hugged Christians and I laughed with Jews and we sat down and, and I mentioned Jews a lot because although this will get me in trouble, I've never said this before, but Palestine is Jewish land. I mean, come on, who doesn't know this? Jesus came to Jerusalem. He came to the Israelites who were there. It's Jewish land. I mean, if the Jews later on, later on want to become Christians, believe in Jesus, and then later on, later on they want to believe in Muhammad, that's fine, you can change your religion, but you can't change the, the history of the land. It's Jewish land. But why is it that nobody really understands Islam? You can go and study for 20, 30 years, but you will never, as a non-Muslim, understand how Muslims really think. And unless someone speaks out and tells you exactly how Muslims think, you will never know. Even if you convert to Islam, you're still not going to know. That's something that has been inherited by every Muslim since the emergence of Islam. How Muslims think. But why is it that I am being attacked and I suffer from death threats? When I just want to spread peace. I sit with a Jewish rabbi in a synagogue and they're not happy, the Muslims. When I say Muslims, I mean Muslim leaders in this country. Or when I worship in a church, they're not happy or celebrate Christmas, they're not happy or have an Easter egg and they're not happy. What's the problem? And I relate to a story which goes like this. Once upon a time, there was a huge crack in a road. And every time a car would come driving at night, the car would flip and it would go off the road. 
So a man came and took a look at this scene and he saw the cars flipping and he said, well, you know what, this is a good opportunity. So he started his towing company. So now whenever a car flips, he's ready and he says, would you like some service? I'll tow your car. So then another man came and he said, well, this is a good opportunity. So he opened a mechanic shop right next to it. So now the tow truck is towing the damaged vehicles to the mechanic. Well, the mechanic says, go and come back tomorrow. Someone else came and said, well, it's good to have a motel over here. So they started the motel. And the motel had a restaurant. Slowly, slowly, they realized there were children coming in these vehicles and they needed a hospital for the children and they needed a childcare center. And then police needed to start doing patrols in that area and slowly, slowly it grew into a small town. Why? Because there was a crack in that road. But as soon as someone wanted to fix that crack in the road, the entire town came out protesting against that person because they're living off the broken road. This is Islam today. They're living off a broken ideology and as soon as someone wants to come out and fix it, the entire country, whether it be an Islamic government or its missionaries, are not happy. I believe that the entire religion needs a review. I believe that there are certain books that need to be banned from this country. There are books that are regarded the second book after the Quran. And all mainstream Muslims believe in this book, the Bukhari, a very famous book. It's present in at least the majority of Muslim homes, at least. It's everywhere. It's put on the shelf right beside the Quran. And every act of terrorism is taught from that book. And that book is widely available and sold and published in Australia. And sometimes even given to prisoners to tell them that, hey, you have a second chance. Now, I don't understand how Muslims believe that, well, radical Muslims is, is the main issue here. How they believe that if you blow yourself up, you go have lunch with the Prophet Muhammad in heaven. I didn't know my Prophet was running a restaurant up there. I honestly never knew. And then you have other very attractive statements that they state that you go and you get 72 virgins. But what kind of a virgin is she that I would have to blow myself up for her? There are things in religion that need reformation and they will be reformed. And it's not very hard to reform. All you need to do is point the finger at what is wrong. Once upon a time they asked a man in Iran, how did you learn beautiful manners? And he said, I learned it from the disrespectful people. When I saw the good, pointing out the bad, I knew that that was the wrong choice to make. I did the opposite of what the bad people do. That's how you learn good manners. If we start pointing the fingers at the Grand Mufti, at every corrupt Imam, every corrupt Muslim leader, and put them in their place, Islam will slowly, slowly change.